Hi there and welcome to this video lesson on calculus and introduction to limits. Now I really never actually understood limits until I heard this explanation so I hope wherever I got it or whoever shared this explanation with me wouldn't mind me sharing it with you today. Okay so what's limits all about? Well let me start with an example. Imagine I had a square here okay and since I am terrible at drawing on this surface we would try to get an area of 16 square centimeters okay that's what we're trying to get that means that the one side must be 4 and the other side must be 4 as well okay now what happens if I since I'm not good at drawing it I don't get to 4 but 4.1 what do I get? So in other words, if my side length is 4 comma 1 and I square this, what do I get? In other words, my length squared would give me 16.81. 16.81. That's what I get if I square this length. So now my question is, okay, I see that I'm close to 4. When I'm close to 4, uh, four, then area is relatively close to 16. Okay? That's the first thing I see. Okay? The next thing I see is that let's try and get closer. So let's, let's say I measure a little bit more accurate, accurately and I get to f uh, and I measure off 4.01 now if I do 4.01 and I square it so both sides are 4.01 instead of 4.1 then I'll get 16.0801 okay look at this when I get closer to 4 Okay, since 4.01 is close to 4 then 4.1, then the area is closer, closer to 16. Okay, let's try one more. What about 4.001? Okay, so both side lengths are 4.001. So now I get 4. 0.001 when I square 4.001 I get 16.008001 I see again yes it's true when I get closer to 4 then the area is closer to 16 okay now what what that effectively means is I can get as close to 16 as close to 16 as is required so however close you want me to be to 16 without actually being 16 so I can have 16 point and a million zeros before my first eight I must just have four point a million zeros before my first one so however close you want me to get to 16 I can get as close to 16 as required by getting close enough to 4 by getting close enough to 4 okay now this whole these three um, observations are the three foundations for a limit so that I can say that the limit when L is tending to 4 of L squared in other words multiplying side length by side length would equal to 16 so what does this mean this means when L is close to 4 L squared is close to 16 when L gets closer to 4 L squared gets closer to 16 I can get as close to 16 with L squared as I want to by just getting close enough to 4 okay now what we also know 
is that 4 squared is equal to 16. So if we were to talk about function notation, let's say we had fx is equal to x squared. Then we would be able to say that the limit when x tends to 4 of fx is equal to 16. This is what we would expect to happen. This is what we would expect to happen at 4. x equal to 4. What actually happens is when we substitute. So if we substitute f of 4, we get 4 squared equal to 16. This is what actually happens. Actually happens. So, f so what I mean to say is, let's say you didn't know that if that 4 times 4 equals 16, but you see this table. You see that as 4 gets closer to, uh, sorry, as the side length gets closer to 4, the area gets closer to 16. You can conclude that what you would expect to happen is that when we're at 4, the area would be at 16. That's what you would expect to happen. In this case, that's actually what happens. Okay, let's look at an example where that does not happen. Okay, I'll show you this example. So I'll give you a function this time. This function is x squared minus 1 over um, x minus 1. Okay, and now I want to look at what happens when I want to see what is the limit when x tends to 1 of fx. Okay, so that means I want to recognize these three things. When x is close to 1, what would fx be close to? So let's see. Okay, let's not be at 1 yet, we'll just be close to 1. So here's my x and here's my fx. If we have 1.1, so 1.1 means I'm close to, okay, okay, so we have 1.1 squared minus 1 is equal to 0 0.21 divided by, and in brackets, 1.1 minus 1, close the brackets, equals 2.1. Okay, 2.1. So let's make our first conclusion. Okay, let's see. When x is close to 1, fx is close to 2. Okay, let's see if our first conclusion is in the next one. If we get closer to 1, does fx get closer to 2? Let's try another one. How about 1.01? Okay, 1.01, using our calculator, we have 1.01 squared minus 1, that's my numerator, divided by, and in brackets, 1.01 minus 1, close that bracket, is equal to 2.01. Okay, 2.01. This is indeed true when x gets closer closer to 1 fx gets closer to 2 okay let's try one more and see if this is indeed the case because if it is then we can certainly make our third conclusion okay so 1.001 squared is equal to, no wait, 1.001 squared minus 1 is equal to 0, 0.0 blah blah blah. Okay, that gets divided by and in brackets 1.001 minus 1, close that bracket. Ah, definitely 2.001. And this is now where we can get to our third conclusion that it seems like. I can get as close enough to 2 as I want to, okay? So, get as close to 2 as is required. 
okay so you can really tell me I should get as close to 2 as is actually possible except without getting actually getting to 2 uh, by getting close enough to 1 okay in other words sorry this should be if x can get as close to 2 as possible and uh, just by getting x close enough to 1 okay this these three things are summarized in this expression that the limit when x tends to 1 of fx which in this case is x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to 2 in other words what we expect to happen when x tends to 1 we expect this expression to be equal to 2 okay that's what we would expect so let's see if that actually happens let's try it okay how do we do see what actually happens well we substitute we substitute 1 and see is that what happens well in this case we get a terrible disappointment because 1 squared minus 1 yes that is 0 over 1 minus 1 that's zero as well. This, dear friends, are undefined. Or is undefined, sorry. It's undefined. There is no definition at the point. X is not in the domain of this expression. It's not allowed to be substituted. Okay? In other words, what we expect to happen doesn't happen. Okay? And we can see why, well, we can see that x may not equal 1 because then we have a 0 in the denominator. Okay, that doesn't mean that we don't have a limit. Okay, let me just show you quickly graphically what this looks like. Okay, if I were to draw this graph, it would be a parabola. Looking like this more or less. Okay. and when I get to 4 here if that is 4 then this would be 16 okay and when I was close to 4 whether from the bottom or from the top I was somewhere close to 16 okay it doesn't look like that but I actually am quite close to 16 when I get closer to 4 look what happens when I get closer to 4 I get closer to 16 from the top or the bottom okay now if you were to go and draw me a little neighborhood here you tell me okay you must somehow choose a number and fall inside that neighborhood I will tell you well but I'm not allowed to get to 16 I must just be full in that neighborhood and I'm not allowed to get to 4 I must just choose a number close enough to 4 then it would be definitely possible all I need to do is find that number that is close enough to 4 without actually being at 4 okay so that when I go up to my graph and read off on the vertical I would actually read off in the neighborhood that you gave me to fall into that is the idea of a limit to find the actual value at that point in other words then we take that point go up to the graph and read it off here so what is different in this sketch well I know it doesn't look like that like it but this is actually a straight line okay you can say no man that's not I know what a straight line looks like a straight line is mx plus c that's not mx plus c well it actually is because look I can factorize the numerator as x plus 1 x minus 1 so I can simplify it in the bottom I've got x minus 1 and the x minus 1 cancels to leave me with x plus 1 so this thing simplifies to a straight line but from the very beginning x is not allowed to equal 1 so if I were to draw this straight line okay that straight line would look like this okay it would look like this here 
is the value x is equal to 1. Okay, I'm never allowed to touch that line, but I must make a straight line. How am I going to do that? Well, here's my straight line, x plus 1. Once I get here, I must lift up my pen and continue to draw onwards. And here we've got a little open dot. Okay, and that is when x would have been equal to 2, and, a, when, and that would have been the case when x was equal to to 1. So again we see here when we were close to 1 we were close to 2. When we got closer to 1 we are closer to 2. But I'm never actually allowed to get to 1 because 1 is not defined. Okay so what we would expect to happen as we're drawing this that when when we get to 1 our x must or our y value must be 2 but we actually never get there when we get to 1 we have to lift up our pen and only draw on afterwards okay i hope this made a little bit of sense on where um, limits fits in and it's simply a means to test what we would expect to happen because it is not necessarily possible to define because of a zero in the denominator. That's one uh, application of it. But there are more which falls outside the scope of this course. But I'll see you in the next video where we do a bit more uh, with limits.